tuning in to the Illuminations Podcast. We love having you here. It is our mission to be a beacon of light on your journey towards conscious and mindful living. In our weekly episode, we bring you inspiring change makers in the field of spirituality, healing, personal growth, and wellness who share their insight and expertise so you can navigate your way to a happier, healthier, and more purposeful life. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Illuminations World Podcast. I'm your host, Nia. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, sound therapist, and yoga teacher here at Illuminations. Back with you once again for another episode and a new topic with a new speaker. So today's topic is all about freedom from burnout and trauma without meditation or medication with tiredness solution. That is an interesting topic in itself. And to tell us a little bit more about this topic, I have an extremely special guest with me. Her name is Faye Loand, an internal conflict resolution expert And she talks about her revolutionary new approach called the tiredness solution and how it can help you free yourself from burnout, trauma, and depression without medication, meditation, or endless hours of talk therapy. So let's just dive right in, shall we? But firstly, thank you so much. For joining me here today, Faye. It's, it's a, pleasure a pleasure to have you. Oh my God, the <laughs> pleasure is all mine. I love it. <laughs> Do you know, this is where my wellness journey began with Illuminations. Is it? About 13 years ago. Oh my. And so to come back, you know, I'm based in Auckland, New Zealand, and I haven't been to the Middle East in years and years and years. So to return here and to reconnect with the place where my wellness journey began and with Sonia, the founder, and her vision, feels like coming like full circle. Wow. And it's so exciting to be here. Wow. I love it. I absolutely love it. I can imagine. And I can yeah. totally resonate with that because uh, I started my journey here. Right. And to be part of Illuminations and do this as well. So I, I can completely resonate with what you're feeling yeah. right now. Yeah. So Faith, let we, let's, let's just get straight into it, let's shall we? Let's do it. <laughs> so I was just reading about it and... Uh, The tiredness solution, Mm. what exactly is it? So as the name implies, it is a solution for not just tiredness, but like for any limiting, debilitating life situation that that you're sick and tired of, right? So yes, at first glance, it is a solution for burnout, yes. Or, you know, if you're tired of depression or you're tired of the chronic pain or you're tired of the insomnia or you're tired of... You know, just feeling uninspired and directionless in life. And it's an integrative approach because, I mean, you know and your listeners know that when you're looking for a solution, you need a solution that actually addresses the body, the mind, the emotions, the lifestyle, and the nervous system. Yeah. Because if you just look at any one piece in isolation, while it has a lot of impact and a lot of benefit... It's incomplete. It's incomplete. And so <clears throat> the tiredness solution was born out of my own personal journey over 16 years, searching for solutions for my trauma, my depression, and my burnouts, because there were multiple that didn't involve endless hours of talk therapy, that didn't involve meditation and medication. And this is after 16 years of studying and learning and researching and applying and observing and piecing together what worked and what didn't in my own personal recovery. I eventually coded everything together into one framework, one step-by-step approach that takes you from a point of just feeling sick and tired of where you are, feeling depressed, burnt out, uninspired, wired, uh, and tired, to a place where you have freedom from these conditions so that you can live life the way that you want, feel amazing, and live an amazing life, which is really, at the end of the day, what we all want, right? Yeah, so what really caught my attention was when you said without meditation yes 
And I really yes. want to know what does that mean? Because yes. I thought as when you walk this wellness path, meditation becomes a part of the journey or at least some form of mindfulness. So why do you say no meditation? Yes, I'm saying with that because the thing is for someone who hasn't started the wellness path, right? And who's, you know, like when you're in that space where you're tired, wired and uninspired, right? You're so much in your head. Yeah. And when you're in your head and you try to apply an incredible tool like meditation without actually knowing what it's like to experience your body, mm. without having any experience of body awareness, and while carrying misconception, misconceptions of you know what meditation should look like or feel like, you're going to end up frustrating yourself even more, right? Oh my God, so well said. Absolutely. Yeah, right? Because like, you know, because a lot of times when you're in these chronic states, you're so dissociated from your body, right? 100%. And your body feels tense anyway to begin with yeah. because that's a product of a nervous system that has been in extended prolonged periods yeah. in, you know, heightened sympathetic and dorsal vagal states so already there's tension in the body right yeah. already you can't find freedom in your body to sit still enough and then you compound that with trying to still your mind or notice your thoughts or observe your breath it becomes impossible mm -hmm. and then you get caught up inside your head of oh my god i'm not good at this and i hear so much about mm. it i'm useless i can't do this what's going to work for me if not this because i hear that this is like a gold mine, right? Yeah. Like and everyone so, should meditate. If you're stressed, meditate. And and I'm here also to tell you that depending on where you are in terms of your nervous system, meditation isn't always the best first point of entry into your recovery journey because if you are in a deep depressive state where you're very tamasic or mm. you're very like in rumination mode inside your head, actually trying to meditate is going to loop you further into the story and is not necessarily the best place to begin. Mm. And so with my clients, of course we look at meditation, of course we do, and aspects of mindfulness. But I look at where they are in their journey of A, the wellness journey, and also in their um, like nervous system, um, uh, well, like their, the, the state of their nervous system, and then I match them with a style of meditation that would support their lifestyle, their starting point, and also the state of their nervous system. What I found is that um, when we're in these chronic conditions of like depression, trauma, uh, anxiety, and burnout, when the nervous system is so overloaded and is like in these freeze mm. responses, um, it's really important to start with a style of meditation that that, that connects you to a feeling, a felt sense of safety inside yourself and inside your body. Yeah. Because otherwise it will be too confronting or and also maybe neurologically impossible to observe your thoughts or observe yeah. your emotions. You're, you're more likely to latch onto them or to try and suppress them mm. and deny them. And as we know, self-denial is probably one of the most harmful things that we can do to our mind wow. and to our health and our well-being, right? Because wow. self-denial, I mean, just if you just pause and you think about denial, right? Think about denial and self-denial, right? You're trying to push something away. You're trying to hide away from something. Not address it. Yes, and, but the only time at a nervous system bioevolutionary level, the only time that we would do that is when there's harm, right? And so immediately then the, the nervous system goes into defensive mode, mm -hmm. right? Defense mode. Defense mode is sympathetic activation. That's where, you know, you've got the, the cocktail of stress hormones being secreted. Yeah. Over a prolonged period of time of hiding away from something, pretending something is not there, pushing it away, denying it you're 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 keeping your nervous system in prolonged states of sympathetic activation or chronic stress and this is how chronic conditions emerge mm. they emerge from a place of high stress arousal high sympathetic arousal without down regulating and then over time because the nervous system needs to conserve energy what happens is it goes into freeze mode to conserve energy and the freeze mode or dorsal vagal freeze response is really the, 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 the place where all chronic conditions begin. 
oh my god you just blew my mind because that makes so much sense i love the way you just broke that down so clearly so what you're saying just just to understand all chronic illnesses yeah. are a sign that there is some form of deep trauma that you're not addressing is that right yes i'm here to say that behind all chronic conditions behind all addictions and also behind all self-sabotaging behaviors there is unresolved trauma and you know when i use that word trauma i get either like people nod or i get pushed back and they say oh i've never had trauma in my life i've i've led a really good life and yeah sure because mm. but because trauma you know like the the trauma experts the leading trauma experts like Gabor Mate Peter Levin uh, Bessel van der Kolk they tell us that trauma isn't in the event that trauma is in the nervous system so it's that feeling inside your body when an event in your environment is either overwhelming sudden dramatic intense and and yeah really important where you perceive you don't have the internal resources to cope wow so trauma could be yeah of course like the big traumatic events that we that we think of as trauma you know like rape kidnapping yeah. war domestic violence yeah. so on and so forth but actually i mean you think about it like if you're being yelled at or you've had you've had a horrible breakup with so with a boyfriend or you know you've suddenly lost your job or you're in a car accident or you know um uh, somebody has a go at you on the phone or you know you get a yucky feeling inside yeah. your body right yeah. or if you're ignored when you need someone or you mm. need something there's a yucky feeling in the body well the nervous system experts the leading nervous system experts tell us that that's trauma it's that imprint right the neurological imprint of these life experiences these live events that overwhelm our nervous mm. system and you see the problem isn't the trauma nia the problem is not trauma because hardwired into all nervous systems of mammals all of all of them is a capacity to rebound from the trauma right I mean if you think about like animals in the wild and Peter Levin is an incredible expert if you if you and your audience members are interested in um, learning more about the subject he actually studied animals in the wild for over 20 years yeah. and actually just observed the behavior of animals in the wild because his obsession was like why is it that animals in the wild after they survive like attacks on mm. their life mm they don't develop chronic conditions yet humans who have a more developed and complex nervous system develop chronic conditions like where is the disconnect why does that happen so is it because humans because of this intellect that we have more than uh, animals we we have the ability to make conclusions beliefs um uh, con- uh, yeah, conclusions about ourselves post the trauma that we face. Like, let's say if uh, I was hit as a child, yeah, and I now believe that, like you said, I no longer have that resource yeah. of coping with it. Yeah. So that belief system of okay, I'm not good enough, or I can't do this. Whereas I imagine, as an animal, I wouldn't go down that thinking pattern. Am I right to say that? Yes, you're on the right track. Yes, yes. See, what you just described is a result of not processing the trauma. So so Peter Levin, just I'm going to connect the dots for you and for your audience. So Peter Levin in his actually like obsession, like 20 year obsession around why is that? He said he observed that like zebras, they never develop PTSD. Mm. Lions never develop chronic pain. You know, uh, tigers, cheetahs, they never develop chronic insomnia or depression. And he's like, but but why? Why do we humans do that? And what he realized by observing the animals and their behavior in the wild is that after these animals survive, uh, um, survive like an actual threat to their life, where there's huge flood of stress hormones, mm. huge flus, uh, f- uh, um, uh, uh, flood of survival energy mm. in their bloodstream, after the event is over, they retreat, they move away, they take time out, and they literally, quite literally, they shake off the tension from their body. So they're quite literally, they're dispelling the stress hormones from their tissues. No way. So their stress hormones aren't, aren't, aren't actually getting stuck in their body. It's that whole, that whole thing about issues in the tissues. 
Whereas we as human beings, right, we think we're so smart, so we override the, that feeling in the body and we start intellectualizing what happens or denying it or suppressing it or moving away from it. And eventually what happens is the mind creates a story. Wow. That is incredible. Isn't it? It's like revolution. Like for me, that stuff was is revolutionary and it's so powerful. And you know when I say find freedom from these conditions without endless hours of talk therapy. Yeah. It's because talking about the problem will not free the body of the feeling that the more. event created. So you've got to work with the feeling in the body. Start from there in order to move away from these chronic conditions and to the desired states and the desired outcomes. So you know when I say freedom from trauma, depression, and burnout, and I lump all of them there, because all of them are symptoms of unresolved internal conflict or unresolved trauma. So where does tiredness solution come in in this situation? How is it different from subco- other subcognitive modalities like hypnotherapy? Yeah. So the tiredness solution is my proprietary system, Nia, right? So this is the system, the framework that was born of my own journey through multiple rounds of burnout, multiple rounds of adrenal fatigue, and a lifetime of chronic conditions to find freedom from those conditions, right? Such as, can you, what, what kind of chronic conditions? So I had PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, <clears throat> anxiety, chronic pain, uh, chronic insomnia, depression, and, you know, the adrenal mm. fatigue, right? Mm. And, I mean, if you or your listeners have been there or know anyone who's ever suffered with chronic conditions like you know that it's not just about your mood it's not just about your energy levels Mm. it's not just about your emotions it's everything right Mm. like when you're burnt out yes you're like tired to the bone but your mood is also so so low you know you don't have emotional regulation your sleep is interrupted you you don't have clarity and vision over your life um Things don't make sense. So it, it, it really, it affects everything. Mm. And, you, and the tiredness then has such a pervasive mm. uh, um, uh, reach in your life, negative reach in your life. So <clears throat> when I initially was diagnosed, had all of these chronic conditions, uh, and I didn't want to go down the traditional path of talking about the problem and, you know, numbing it down with pills. It's like, well, what do I do instead? Yeah. I didn't know what to do instead because I didn't have a framework in front of me. So I was just left to figure it out for myself. And what makes, and so I studied different, so many modalities, mm. so many, because as I said, every modality actually has benefits. Mm. And Then I put it all together. So there's aspects of the tiredness solution that work on mindset and, of course, on thoughts and emotions and the nervous system and the body and the subconscious mind and lifestyle. So if you really want a long-lasting solution from chronic conditions, you need a multidisciplinary integrative approach. Mm. You need it. And the tiredness solution is one of those. So yes, it does work with the subconscious mind. And yes, one way to work with the subconscious mind is hypnotherapy. Mm. But that's not the only way. You can work with the subconscious mind by using somatic therapies, Mm. by using NLP practices, by using um, yoga nidra practices. So there's many, many ways around it. However, However, if you want freedom from trauma, depression, and burnout, you definitely need to develop relationship with your subconscious mind and that's one of the pillars of my nine-step proprietary system is developing a relationship with your subconscious mind wow so could you take us through your system what does that system look like so it's nine steps okay or and they're not really linear right although the first although the first one that i'm going to start with is where i always begin and every step is kind of like um uh, a principle to keep in mind so the very, very, very first place to begin and that I always begin and that I would encourage your listeners to begin is assuming responsibility for change. Yes, and I mm. know that that sounds trite, but it's so important because, Nia, when we are in these stuck states, mm-hmm. we're so identified with the problem, aren't we? And we become so rehearsed in what we don't want 
and in trying to push it away, we lose sight of what we want instead, right? And then we end up, and it's not like you, it's just like a product of your nervous system. You end up a little bit in like blame, self-blame and victim mode Mm. where you're pointing the finger at everything else and everyone else Mm. and you're not looking at what's here, you know, yourself, your journey, so on and so forth. So assuming responsibility for change is about two things. It's about owning the outcome, like saying, you know, I am the only one responsible for the change. So not being a victim. Yeah, like it's not my job. Like it's not my it's not the job that's causing you burnout. It's not your it's not your partner, it's not your children, it's not your to-do list, it's not it's none of these things. Taking 100% responsibility. 100% so it's actually saying it's me and 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 the change is in my hands and in the hands of no one else. And I can imagine that takes a lot of courage to do that because not a lot of people no. want to do that. No. No, and that's why that's why and I know what I'm about to say is going to sound controversial. That's why unfortunately most people continue living in these chronic conditions because they're either waiting for a magic pill, a magic potion or for some external in, uh, um, event to change their life experience and it doesn't you, you and yeah. I know it doesn't work that way eh? it yeah. does not work that way so so and the other piece of assuming responsibility for change is declaring what you want instead mm. you know because I mean we know how the subconscious mind works right if you keep saying I don't want to be tired I don't want to be sick I don't want to be angry I don't want to be unhappy well, what is your subconscious mind here and just all the negatives well, what do you want instead? Like, just declare, what do you want instead? Mm. But like when I work with, you know, my clients, whether it's one-on-one or in groups, we spend a lot of time on this step because I teach them and I work with them on articulating how to declare these things using language items and language terms and language patterns that the subconscious mind can understand and act on quickly mm. easily and effortlessly mm. so that's that's where that's always where i begin and where i would encourage your guests to begin if they're serious about making changes in their life taking okay. responsibility for the outcome and getting really serious on what you want instead now the other eight steps are not linear right mm. but they're all necessary if you want to find freedom from these chronic conditions and one of those is resolving internal conflicts, right? Mm-hmm. What do I mean by internal conflicts? Internal conflicts are those internal limitations, internal blockages that basically keep you from feeling the way that you want to feel. Mm-hmm. So it's things like past traumas, adverse childhood experiences, negative emotions, phobias, uh, irrational fears, limiting beliefs, but also, and that's a biggie, misaligned values. Wow, it's a big one misaligned values misaligned values values. huge because if if and as we know values are uh, one of the deepest um uh, constructs of the subconscious mind like they're deeply rooted in our subconscious mind right and as we know the subconscious mind runs our runs the show so if for example you value as an example you value freedom right and that's a core value of yours Mm. And then something happens in your environment where freedom is um, impacted on. There's going to be an internal clash. Yeah, it's going to create a, a stressful experience. And I'm going to share something that's very live with your audience. That actually, I you know, until recently was my lived experience in New Zealand. So f- freedom is a is a core core value of mine um, in New Zealand. Um, the uh, COVID response was quite different than the rest of the world. And um, there were really, really, really strict mandates. So people that were not vaccinated were basically cast out of uh, uh, the public arena. So so I made the decision not to take the Pfizer vaccine, which meant that I couldn't get my hair cut, I couldn't go to the gym, I couldn't work, I couldn't go to a cafe. There were many things that were impacted on. So because I value freedom... And that was my lived experience mm. with everything that I know. Mm. I still actually had experienced internal conflict because wow. my core value of freedom 
was being infringed upon was not being fulfilled. Wow. And when your core values are not being fulfilled, there's negative emotions that arise. Mm. And this is why it's really important to look at your core values, understand what they are, so that you can bring them into alignment because otherwise the negative emotions will remain regardless of how much work you do on emotions. Yeah. So that's, you know, resolving internal conflicts. You also, if you want to find freedom from these chronic conditions, you also need to resolve tensions from the physical body. And I'm not just talking exercise here, eh? although, I mean, exercise is really important, mm. but I'm talking about like removing the tension and the stiffness from the joints, from yeah. the fascia, the myofascia, the energy systems of the body, the diaphragm, you know, the psoas, these muscle areas where mm. stored um, uh, uh, survival energies get locked in yeah really 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 i mean you know nia yeah. and i'm sure your listeners can resonate with this that when you're feeling when there's tension in the body you can't be relaxed yeah. like you just can't be yeah. right so you gotta release the tensions from the physical body you also need to reframe the negativity bias right if you want to find freedom from these conditions because I mean, mental health issues, one of the contributing factors and what keeps them locked in is the constant negativity, right? Yeah. And we, like, you cannot eliminate negativity because it's part of the hardware. It has a bioevolutionary bio advantage. But what you can do and you need to do is to reframe it, right? To keep it in check, to, um, to uh, like, reframe your thoughts, mm -hmm. right? to change your thinking about situation, mm. about situations. So that's really, really important that you look at the negative influences in your life. Uh, the, so it's not just what you tell yourself or the negative emotions, but like, what are you watching? What are you listening to? Mm. Who are you spending time with? Uh, what are you reading? Like, like, just really, really be mindful of the negative influences in your life. Mm. Really, really, really important. Another area of the tiredness um, solutions is developing rela a relationship or rapport with the subconscious mind. Okay. And so, you know, we've been talking about the subconscious mind. And so, you know, the subconscious mind um, drives everything, but it, it's, it's basically, it's your body mind, mm. right? It's the part of your, your neurology that basically keeps you alive, that beats your heart, that breathes your lungs, that digests your food, that, um, that uh, regulates your biorhythms. Yeah. It's the most powerful part of your existence. Mm. And most of us aren't even aware of it. We're not aware of how it works. And we're not aware that we can actually drive the subconscious mind, right? We were not aware that we can do that. And then when we are in relationship with the subconscious mind, then we actually are working in alignment with ourselves. We're no longer fighting ourselves and we're recruiting this really powerful part of ourselves to drive us forward towards where we want to go instead. So most of us aren't aware, like for example, that there's critical times during the day um, where we're in our subconscious, where basically we're in hypnosis. And that is that hypnagogic state that arises right before you drift off mm. and right upon awakening. You know, yeah. when you're still like yeah. sedate yeah. and groggy and it's that heavy feeling in the body. And what do most people do during that time? On their well, phones. you know, I mean, please, like instead of doing that, mm. I mean, you're just like, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. If you start your day that way and you yeah. end your day that way, there's yeah. no way you're going to move out of these chronic conditions. Because yeah. you're like, you're, you're in negativity, you're externalized, you're on someone else's borrowed agenda, yeah. you're thinking someone else's thoughts, you're consuming someone else's behaviors and feelings instead of focusing on yourself yeah. and where you want to go and how you want to feel instead and being like in, you know, like the, the daydream wandering state, which is so healthy because that's your subconscious mind. You know, you get a lot of downloads during that time, yeah. a lot of insights, a lot of understanding. So learning how to develop a relationship with your subconscious mind and use as examples those times during the day to your benefit is hugely beneficial, hugely beneficial. Mm. So we spend a lot of time working on how to develop a relationship with your subconscious mind. Another area of um, the tiredness solution is getting rid of chronic stress. Now, I'm sorry, Nia, stress management does not work. <laughs> no, it 
do, like, like I mean, we've all heard about oh, you need to manage stress, you need to reduce stress, da 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 da, and we all know oh yeah, you know, there's these apps out there, and you've got your lack like, stress balls and your lavender essential oils and your diaphragmatic breaths, and you know, you come to yoga once a week, and okay, if that were the case then there should not be a stress pandemic out there. Mm. But why is it that there's a still a stress pandemic? Would you say it's because people, it's hard for people to put in the work on a daily basis without getting demotivated? Because it is on a daily basis. You have to show totally. up. Totally, you've got to show up. But yes, definitely that's part of it. But I I, I think that a, a bigger part of it is um, that people have bought into this falsehood that stress is bad for you, that we need to avoid stress, and that stress needs to be managed. Mm. And I'm here to challenge that because I'm here to say, like with the scientists like Kelly McGonigal and her colleagues uh, like um, uh, Alia Bloom from uh, Stanford University in California, that stress can be very, very enhancing. Mm. That stress, when it's approached with the right mindset, can provide you with a plethora of internal resources that boost your energy, Mm. boost your productivity, boost your focus, boost your connection, boost your performance. Mm. I mean, you think just as an example, just as an example, like you think about like athletes, you know, Mm. Olympic athletes, or you think about like, you know, stage performers, you know, they're, there are stress hormones mm. flooding through their system. Yeah. And actually the stress hormones are actually beneficial to their performance. They're beneficial to the, the race. Mm. They're not in their optimum because they're relaxed. Yeah. But what they're doing is they've managed to tap into a mindset where they're harnessing the positive benefits of the stress hormones and they know, and this is really important, how to reset after that flood of stress hormones in their system. See, but with us, what we're doing for many of us, we're still under that, you know, that mythical uh, mainstream approach of, oh, you know, you need to avoid stress. Stress is terrible. Stress Mm. is a killer. It's not true. So we end up suppressing it, suppressing it, suppressing it. But what we're doing is we're suppressing the beneficial aspects of it and we're not bringing in those uh, those reset practices that help to keep the balance in the nervous system. So what's really important if you want to find freedom from trauma, depression, and burnout is you need to get rid of the chronic stress. But the other stress, learn how to uh, uh, cultivate a mindset that allows you to use stress as an advantage. Wow. So that's like... That's a game changer in and yeah. of itself. That, and that's why actually I have a course just on how to do that. It's a six-week course called the Stress Response Regulation Process. And it basically takes you through how do you illuminate chronic stress? Because really the chronic, the chronic stress comes from emotional stressors. Mm. How to stop the old subconscious programs that keep the stress wheel going. Mm. And how to apply the brake pedal so that you're resetting after the stressful uh, episodes or events in your life. So getting rid of chronic stress is a core practice, a core piece of my tiredness solution. So is regulating the nervous system. So important. You know, I mean, like, the nervous system is in everything. <clears throat> the nervous system, when the nervous system is balanced mm. and regulated, everything works according to the way nature intended it, eh? So your digestion is uninter- is is uninterrupted, there's no digestive issues, there's no allergies, your sleep is good, there's no chronic pain, your mood is optimized, your capacity for clear thinking is optimized, you think positively, you're, you're in charge of your emotions, you're in charge of your thoughts, you know, like you're really living your very maximized, optimized self, right? Because like nervous, the nervous system or regulation is a new hot topic in this wellness industry right now. But what exactly is it? Like what exactly is a nervous system? And you mentioned a few points in terms of yeah. your um, how it affects you physically. Yeah. But what exactly is it? What does it do? So the nervous system is, it's in everything, as I mentioned, yeah. right? In the wellness space, um, the aspect, the, the branch of the nervous system to really focus on is the 
autonomic nervous system, right? Because your nervous system is your brain, it's your brain stem, it's your spinal cord, right? So that's like the central nervous system. But the part of the nervous system that really is the part of the is the part of our neurology that can get us into trouble but also get us out of trouble is the autonomic nervous system, which is the automated part of our of our biology, mm. right? Now, this autonomic nervous system, its job is to keep you alive, you, yeah. to keep your physical body alive, right? Yeah. So it will prioritize your physical survival over anything else. Got you. And as you and I know, because we're clinical hypnotherapists, right, that if there is a perception of threat, it doesn't matter if the threat is actual or emotional, that nervous system will go into survival. When the nervous system is in survival, because its main job is to keep you physically alive, it will deprioritize everything else. Mm. It will deprioritize immunity and digestion and reproduction and yeah. happiness and thriving. And this is why during prolonged periods of stress, we get sick. Mm. You know, we have issues with our periods or with fertility. We can't sleep. We're unhappy. We can't think clearly. It's because the nervous system is stuck in these survival energies. It hasn't come back down. It hasn't down regulated. Mm. And so all of these other functions become deprioritized. Wow. And over time, that's where illnesses come from, right? Because wow. so you can imagine feeling sad or stressed about something for, let's say, six months, how it can actually affect your physical body. So your body is actually speaking to you. 100%. Always the mind, actually what I tell my clients is the mind is always speaking to you through your body. Wow. And, you know, many of us, I mean, included when I started off in this journey, I didn't know that mm. and I didn't know how to read my body. Yeah. So I didn't know how to read the signs because my my mind was screaming through the body, mm. screaming, you know. And because I didn't listen, because I didn't know how to listen, my first point of crisis ended up with me driving on my way into work one day and I completely lost control. I like I passed up behind the wheel of the car and the car went spinning and it ended up on the other end of the road right by a bridge and it was like teetering on the edge. So you can imagine. But the mind is what had wanted me to pay attention to all these unresolved internal conflicts. So it was it was sending signs. So how did the signs start? It started off with, um, uh, you know, like uh, digestive issues. Yeah. And um, then it started off with, um, you know, heart palpitations, dizziness and vertigo, uh, bad acne, very, very bad acne. Anyone with skin conditions? Anyone with skin conditions? Here's something that I didn't know. It took me 15 years <laughs> to learn this. The part of so let let me let, let me let me get this correctly to you to you and to your um to your audience. So the outer the outer part of the brain mm. and the inner part of the skin are made of the same tissues. Wow. So you can imagine that if there's strain and um, tension in the nervous system in the brain, it's going to be reflected in the skin, which is the largest organ in the body, right? Wow. My periods were a mess. My moods were a mess. like, so the mind was screaming to me and like bone tired. I was like a bone tired. Like my day would consist of um, caffeine to get me go uh, going, sugar to keep me going. And then because I was so wired at night, I couldn't downregulate. Yeah. What was wine? And you know, Nia, I know that, you know, many people live this way and I know yeah. that it seems common yeah. and normal, but sorry, it's not natural to live this way. Yeah. And just because something is normal, it doesn't make it natural. Yeah. It's not natural for you to need high doses of caffeine to get going in the morning, high doses of sugar to keep you going in the afternoon and lots of alcohol at night to downregulate. That is not natural. So you can imagine how you're numbing your system in many ways and no wonder it just kind of collapses at some totally. point through different ailments and diseases totally. so i can imagine how different ailments in your body would have a deeper metaphysical reason for why it has manifested huge huge and and if you this is why you know my slogan is without medications you can imagine if you're taking medication you're completely disconnecting from the yeah. wisdom yeah of what the mind is trying to tell you through the body yeah and, and, you know, the thing is, 
if this, these medications really worked, then there wouldn't be the high levels of anxiety and the high levels of depression that persist even after people are on medication. Yeah. Because the medication isn't dealing with the root cause. cause. It isn't it isn't dealing with what is creating the internal conflict that is driving the nervous system yeah. into these stuck states where the only thing that is neurologically possible is depression, burnout, uh, chronic pain, chronic insomnia and anxiety. That's that's all that is neurologically available when we're in those states. That's insane. I love how you just broke that down in such a beautiful way. So just to sum it up, um, I, I, I took some pointers down and I'm just going to read it out to you and yeah. you can let me know if I missed something. So first thing is assuming responsibility for change. Yeah. Right. Second is resolving internal conflicts yeah. and understanding what your values are. What are your misaligned values? What are the limiting beliefs yeah. and so on? Yeah. Number three, releasing the tension in your body. Yeah. Number four, building a rapport with your subconscious mind. Yeah. Number five, regulating your nervous system. And number six, dealing with chronic stress. Is that right? Yeah, eliminating it. Eliminating chronic stress. And number and we need three more. Yeah, to, so there's also reframe the negativity bias. You've got to deal with the negativity, right? Really, really important. We also talked about developing a relationship with the subconscious mind. Yes, that was number four. And the other one is regulating the biology. So what do I huh. mean by that? I mean, you know, because it doesn't matter like... You, you can work on the mindset and the emotions and the nervous system and the subconscious mind all that you want. But if you're still like eating foods that like are not what your body needs, if you're still like not respecting the, the circadian rhythms mm. of day, night, light, dark, mm. you're still going to, you know, be shooting yourself in the foot. 100%. If you're not attending to your circadian, uh, to your sleep, yeah, you know, and regulating your sleep, which is a, a core biological rhythm, yeah, you're not going to be able to free yourself from these conditions and access these um, states of high, heightened states of well-being. If for, see, this is the only kind of piece in my system where I usually recruit like functional medicine doctors mm. to work alongside of yeah. me because it's not like within my scope of practice. However, because I've been through, you know, so many of these chronic conditions, I know what you need to pay attention yeah. to, to get over the hump. Like for example, you know, if your iron levels are low, you know, if you're like, if you have, if you're really, really tired and you've tried everything and you're still feeling tired. Well, I mean, it could be as simple as maybe your iron levels are low. Go get your iron levels checked out. Yeah. It could be something as simple as, you know, like getting an, ad an adaptogen, mm. you know, ashwagandha, Siberian mm. ginseng, licorice root, you know, like looking at supporting your adrenals. Yeah. If you're eating gluten and dairy and your gut is unhappy with that and your microbiome is unhappy with that and we now know so much about the gut-brain yeah. access, 100%. you know, that's also going to keep you stuck here longer than you need to be so this is why it's quite important to pay attention to the biology and regulate yeah. the biology yeah because the food that you eat and what you put in your system also has a huge effect on 100%. your on your mental health 100%. especially because of the gut brain connection because yes. i read the other day about 95 percent of serotonin and dopamine is produced in, in the, the gut, gut. In the so gut. you can imagine if you are feeling depressed yeah. and and low where you have low serotonin and dopamine you could just imagine what's happening in your gut as well yes and then and then trying to uh, optimize that optimize that by taking an antidepressant you yeah. can also see why that is not helpful 100 percent it's, it's crazy when we talk about this and it makes so much sense why the tiredness solution is just an all-rounded approach yeah. and it's just so beautiful. And it's not just addressing one pillar, which is just a subconscious yeah. mind, but it's addressing the body, 
the mind, all the the the, the subtle aspects of the what's lifestyle, habits, the nervous system, the emotions. As I said, integrative. It's got to be love integrative. It. It's got to be integrative, eh? I love it. Oh my god, this just blew my mind, <laughs> and I absolutely, truly, truly appreciate you coming on board and sharing this with our audience. Such a pleasure. And I feel like I could talk to you <laughs> about this for ages, but unfortunately we have to wrap this up. But before we leave, yeah. what would be your top three tips for our audience? Okay. So again, I go back to the start, right? Which is get clear on what you want instead. Okay. Like really, like just like, articulate what do you want you know and I know again it sounds so trite and it sounds so simple but a lot of us struggle with it because we don't take the time out to touch base with what we really want instead we're so busy eh? we're distracted we're externalized we're like out here doing you know we're in doing mode like we just don't actually have a relationship with ourselves yeah we don't inquire deep enough into what it is we want instead so we're like in default mode you know yeah well, you know, you can't live that way. If you want the life that you want, you need to be a little more intentional. So what do you want? Yeah. Get really clear on what do you want. Simple. I know it's simple, yeah. but it's life-changing, eh? To just articulate what it is that you want. That mm. would be tip number one. Tip number two would be, please, 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 be mindful of what you do during those times when your brain is in hypnosis, like mm. right before sleep and right upon awakening. Like, please use that time more intentionally. Yeah. Please put your phone off for at least five minutes before you drift off and keep it off for at least five minutes when you wake up. If you want tips on how to do that or apps or whatever, I've got a blog on my website, failawan.com. Like, but watch, watch the docu documentary, The Social Dilemma on Netflix. Watch it again if you've watched it yeah. at least one time. So important. Yeah. Nia, I really truly believe that we cannot um, uh, make our way out of this mental health crisis mm -hmm. that we're in if we don't find a way to discipline ourselves with technology. And I love how you brought in discipline because I, I, I was going to just say how crucial it is. It's huge. Into if you want change. That's the thing. That's the thing. If you want change, that's why it's all about assuming responsibility for change. But I imagine if your listeners are still listening to this, it's because they're serious about wanting change, yeah. right? So this is for you, you know, like get really mindful about that time because you basically have a window into self-transformation. Mm. It's hardwired into our yeah. nervous system. The third thing is um, invest in yourself, invest in your well-being, invest in your mental health, invest in your health. You know, it's so important to do that. I have invested years in myself. I've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I'm so glad that I did because, you know, without you being well on the inside, it doesn't matter how yeah. much you have or what you have. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So, you know, like take the time out, invest in therapy, invest in a coach, invest in a wellness program, invest in a retreat like really get serious about your health and your mental health and your well-being. Yeah. And it will pay lots of dividends in the long term. Thank you so much, Faye, for, <laughs> uh, for enlightening us today oh, with, uh, with all this insight. I really appreciate it. I'm sure the, the listeners have also learned a lot from you today. So thank you so much. Such a and pleasure, And uh, hopefully we will have you back for another episode at I some really point. I really look forward to it. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you to all the listeners for joining in again, listening to learn and to live light. So until next time, take care and stay safe. Bye. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, we'd love to have you tune in again next week as we discuss more engaging topics on relationships, health, career, self-care, and spirituality. If you'd like to help support this podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave us a rating and review. We'd be extremely grateful. To catch all the latest from us, you can also follow us on Instagram at Illuminations World or visit the Illuminations World YouTube channel for more inspiring content. See you again next week, and until then, live light. Live light.